in western Washington, but what is happening east of the mountains? And the infection prevention specialist at Pullman Regional Hospital gives you tips on how to protect yourself. That and more tonight on Murrah News 8. on the campus of Washington State University. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Carmen Ditto. And I'm Lucy Fasano. Welcome to Murrow News 8. According to the Seattle Times today, three more coronavirus-related deaths brings the number of Washington State fatalities to a total of nine. Two of the three deaths announced today were residents of a Kirkland nursing home, Right now, seven of the nine deaths in the state were residents of the same nursing home called the Life Care Center. All coronavirus-related deaths in the nation have been in Washington State, and there are currently 27 known cases here, specifically in King and Snohomish counties. Promise Callaway is live from Pullman Regional Hospital right now with the coronavirus update and for some, and for some advice staying healthy. Promise, how are things going over there? Thanks, Carmen. Um, the coronavirus has been a t the talk of the town lately. Um, the coronavirus death toll has risen to nine today with all deaths being in Washington state. Um, the global outbreak has reached Iran, Italy, North Korea, and Japan. And with these outbreaks continuously growing, China has still been seeing a little bit of an increase with their um, things getting better as people have been able to control the disease. Um, now we have Diane Wick with some tips and tricks on how to become a little bit more healthy. Proper hand hygiene, diligent hand hygiene, and limit your contact with your face and your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Coronavirus has affected the world in many ways, and now some WSU students will return home. Riley Nelson is currently abroad in Barcelona, Spain. Here's what she has to say about her experience. My program has talked about changing our classes to just online if any quarantine issues that will happen that will make us so we can't go to class. A lot of us here in Barcelona feel like we might have about two weeks left just because of seeing how many warning signs are out there to study abroad students. With college students heading back from their programs abroad, Ariel Yakabazi takes a look at our local airport and how new changes are on the way. A new runway, new standards, and new objectives. The Pullman Moscow Regional Airport is now up to code after nearly five years of being under construction. But what's next for the small airport? There have been a lot of questions about what the airport can do since its reopening in October of 2019 and what it will do now that it's up to code. There has been talk of adding a flight to Denver, Colorado, although it is not confirmed. But airport management is having a discussion with higher ups. Executive director of the airport, Tony Bean, explains why having an up to code airport allows for better connection with carriers. The best thing about the runway is before we didn't meet standards, you couldn't go talk to an air carrier. Mm -hmm. So we weren't able to go talk to anybody about, well, please come service our community because we got all these wonderful things, but oh yeah, we've got a deficient airport and it's gonna handcuff your operation. You know, they gotta choose from you know, 400 other or 500 other cities and towns in the United States have commercial service. Why would they choose ours? Now we meet standards. Basically, with the runway realignment, the airport is up to code, so it can receive the funding it needs to improve from the FAA. This can include adding a flight to Denver. Although many citizens already know about the runway realignment, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport has received three grants, and here's what they are. The original grant the airport received was the $24 million grant. This was used for the runway realignment. As for the future, the airport recently received $6 million. According to Bean, this is the last bit of money the airport needs to finish off the realignment project, including work on a new taxiway. The third grant is for $1 million. This will be used for building a new terminal. With this new terminal will come more space and more parking to compensate the terminal. According to Bean, the new terminal is slated to be built in the next two years. With Murrow News 8, I'm Ariel Yakubazi. Don't go away. When we come back, a look into our weather in Pullman.
and the political scene is heating up nationally and on our campus when we come back. Welcome back to Moreau News 8. It may be sunny, but the wind is really making it hard to walk around campus. Jasmine, what's going on out there? Thanks, Carmen and Lucy. So if you woke up earlier today, you were welcomed with the sunshine. And throughout the day, we saw some clouds. A little warm today at 54 and a low of 37. Um, and tomorrow's forecast is a bit cooler and some clouds throughout the day, along with uh, winds up to 30 miles an hour, highs of 48 and a low of 33. Looking into our state map here, we'll start at a, in Olympia and Seattle with rain showers and about the same temperatures in the low 50s um, for our highs and then 41 for Seattle for the low and then 38 for Olympia. Heading over the mountains to Cent or to eastern Washington, Yakima and Tri-Cities, a bit warmer at 63 for Yakima and 66 for um, Tri-Cities, both clear sides through the valley to Spokane and Pullman. Like I said earlier, 54 degrees and then Spokane just the same and then a low of 36. We saw some clouds as well. And then to our five day forecast here, um, we talked about tomorrow being mostly clear, high of 54 degrees. Wednesday, or excuse me, Wednesday being uh, a bit windy at 48 and a low of 33. And then Thursday, something to look forward to, we get warmer, 58 degrees and then rain and then rain and snow on Saturday. And then Sunday, just to let you know, it is daylight savings. So don't forget to spring forward an hour, putting your clocks up an hour so that Monday morning you can start on time. Back to you, Carmen and Lucy at the desk. Thanks so much, Jasmine. A tornado hit Tennessee yesterday and stretched throughout several counties. According to the New York Times, at least 22 people have died from the storm. The tornado went right through the center of the state, hitting Nashville and leaving it covered in debris. Schools are closed and tens of thousands of people have lost power. President Trump is expected to visit Nashville on Friday. 14 states and one territory will hold nominating contests for the Democratic Party candidates for president today. It is most pivotal day on the presidential primary calendar. Today's contest is the largest to date in the terms of delegates up for grabs this election cycle. The first polls start closing at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And at this time, today's newscast, Bernie Sanders was leading the polls with 60 delegates and Joe Biden is trailing behind with 54. And in third, we have Pete Buttigieg with 26 delegates. The ASWSU debates are upon us. The multicultural debate is this Thursday at 6 p.m. in the Cub Senior Ballroom, with the general debate following Sunday at 6. There are two, candidates, two candidate teams running, one on all male, and that's in, they're new to the scene, and one male female duo with experience in our student government. The debates are free and open to all. An exciting weekend is coming up for Coug Sports. Let's see how lucky the Cougs will be and where they'll be heading when we return. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up 
without even flinching. That's right. New employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this boy, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome back to Mirror News 8. I'm Asher Lyon. Let's take a look at some sports stories. New York Knicks superfan Spike Lee was removed from Madison Square Garden last night after security told him he used the wrong entrance. Part of the incident was captured on camera where you can hear him saying, quote, nobody, hold, nobody told me. Take a listen for yourself. Because no one told me. No one told me. No one told me. I'm staying here. President no. James Dolan released a statement later claiming Lee was trying to create a fake narrative but also made sure to highlight he is welcome anytime to the VIP entrance. Tiger Woods has been nominated for the World Golf Hall of Fame Class of 2021. Woods has won 82 PGA Tour wins along with 41 European Tour wins. Woods is one of four male finalists to be nominated. The announcement will be made in a few weeks. Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch has been asked to speak at Princeton University's Class Day, much to the dismay of several Princeton students who wrote a letter in a student newspaper. Students complained about not being included in the selection process the letter notes they don't have a problem with Lynch, just with the process with which he was selected. The Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament starts Thursday morning and will conclude Sunday night. I will be at the tournament covering all 11 games for our student radio station, KUGR. The first game will be Thursday morning at 11.30 and will feature Cal and Arizona State. Washington State will play later that night against Oregon State at 8.30 p.m. To tune in, be sure to, watch all, be sure to watch KUGR's live streams on their Facebook page. A schedule of the tournament is available on the Pac-12 website. A moose is on the loose. Find out where the critter is and how police are responding when we come back. Rumors are true, a moose is on the loose in Pullman. A moose that appeared to be young was spotted off of Grand Avenue near Schweitzer Engineering. We haven't had any updates from Pullman PD, and last time we checked, it's still out wandering. Thank you for watching tonight. Be sure to watch our newscasts at nwpb.org slash MNA and on Cable 8 at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you can also follow Murrah News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night.